Today, we're going to dig into some of the privacy issues with Bellina Etcher. So if you are looking to burn images onto a USB drive to test distros or whatever you're going to do, be warned of this information. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today, as we said in the introduction there, we do want to talk about Etcher, and this is an application that has been used many times to burn uh, downloaded images onto USB drives. I believe this is actually the one that Linux Mint also recommends and several other uh, distros because it is cross-platform. You can download it for Windows or Mac or Linux. The problem is, is that people noticed a few years ago it's doing some suspicious things and then they open an investigation. And as of, uh, was it just a couple of weeks ago, Tails has announced it is removing Etcher from its recommended list for Windows because of what they found after this. Now, I had some questions about what they found and how they found it. So we're going to go ahead and chat about those a little bit. But here is the original release from Tails. They're replacing Belena Etcher with Rufus as the installer for Windows. So uh, what they did is uh, they had actually started recommending this in January of 2019. I'll link this press release down below. So, uh, we're not going to read it all together. But what they uh, right after they started to do this, Etcher started showing ads, which is already a sign of being problematic. And they looked at it and said, well, we don't really agree with the ads, but We'll let it slide for now, but they actually opened up a full investigation into this, which has been ongoing for a while. So it's not like they just didn't do anything. They had some geeks on the background doing some pretty in-depth data analysis, what's going on. Now, where I'm having questions is, is down here they say, however, in 2024, the situation changed. Etcher started sharing the file name of the image and the model of the USB stick with the company and possibly with third parties. Parties. They said that we have not heard of any attacks against tail users stemming from this change. We believe it introduced a potential for abuse to eliminate that risk altogether. Now, I could not find anything anywhere that suggested some change occurred in 2024. What I think has happened and probably what they need to word it to is either a people noticed something first time or something may have gone around in the background. Or maybe something else changed. I can tell you that Etcher's privacy policy has not changed in five years. Now, this is a scary privacy policy we are going to look at. So I'm not sure what changed officially in 2024, but this is what they are saying. Now, they evaluated several other tools. They chose Rufus for Windows. And uh, they are they, they are still looking into Mac alternatives. They say you can use the DD command on the on the terminal, or you can actually use the Raspberry Pi imager. And I thought that was an interesting one. Uh, so you know that might be something that anybody wants uh, might want to do. I have here the Raspberry Pi imager. I installed this from the Ubuntu repositories here, and you start um, the device here is what are you doing? So. We don't need to fill out that in the slightest because we're installing Tails. We're not installing anything to a Raspberry Pi. But you want to start with an OS down here. Now, the limitation, of course, is that this uses image files, not ISO files. You'd have to grab something that is an image, at least I think. Um, I'm not sure what will happen if I try an ISO. But here I have a Tails. It's an older version of Tails. Uh, but I have a version of Tails here in my uh, downloads folder. And then I can choose a uh, drive there. And, of course, I don't have a drive plugged in. I forgot to grab a drive. So let me go ahead and, and uh, grab a drive here and plug it in. And you'll see it'll detect. So let's see. So there it is. It detected that drive. And now I can choose this drive. So now I can actually go ahead and I can burn this. There's uh, edit settings. 
Would you like to apply customization? I'd probably just do no at this point in time. And then it will remind us that all of the information on this will be um, erased. So that is certainly an option for us. We can use that Pi Imager here, here on Linux. Even on Windows, you can do it. Although it is kind of more of a workaround. I think that that's what they're getting at. They're looking for other alternatives. So when you go to install Tails now, if you use the Windows installation instructions, you get down to the bottom and here is is the Rufus they're giving you the Rufus link here and this is the direct link and then they are uh, linking back to this saying that they stopped recommending etcher to install it because of its sharing sensitive information that's Windows with Mac it does still in contain the link to etcher but a much bigger one with two alternatives and I'm not sure why they wouldn't just say just use the Raspberry Pi imager for now it's certainly a lot safer than uh, than uh, Etcher at this point in time. Nothing changed on Linux because they weren't ever really recommending using uh, Etcher on Linux anyway. GNOME Disks is a thing, and GNOME Disks can do this as well built in. So that's not a problem. And of course, we have the terminal and command line there options there as well. Now, here is actually where I started to, as I dug down this rabbit hole, I started to raise issues. I was looking around and look at this. This was created six years ago by Tails to evaluate the outgoing network connections of Etcher. So Etcher exfiltrates very sensitive information about its users to the company and probably more third parties. The IP, the file name, and the brand and model of the USB stick. So this apparently was known six years ago. And this is a big question I have. Why were we not as well aware? Now, some people knew about this uh, even in uh, even in Etcher. This is in 2018. There were concerns on Etcher's forums about it, uh, about all of the information and the details. These were all the various domains. And these were actually being sent out even if you opted to not share data with third parties. Now, the Etcher did come out after this and said, uh, I think it was in one of the comments down here saying, oh, yeah, that was a bug in our system. It was sending out data. Even if you had opted to not send any data, it still was. They said they fixed that bug. So, okay, we'll take them at their word. But still, Tails was aware of this for a long time. But to be fair, they did go in and they had to assign it. They had to figure out what was going on. There was a lot of investigation being done. There were a lot of people seeing what data was being collected. And it wasn't until just about a month or so ago that they started closing things out. They changed the description. Or maybe maybe actually it was uh, something else and they changed the description a month ago. That's possible that there were questions about it and then uh, they did I'm not sure exactly how their uh, GitLab is set up or configured on the back end here but regardless they were looking into this for a number of years and then of course over on Linux.org we actually had some response coming up this is from uh, just a couple weeks ago as well shortly after Tails made their uh, their decision to change this. So again, they're quoting this line about in 2024, Etcher started sharing data. I could not find anything anywhere that suggested Etcher did anything different starting in 2024. All I found is their privacy policy, which had not been changed since 2020. Now, maybe something was going on. Maybe in 2024, they started sharing a lot more data with a lot more people. And there just didn't necessitate a change with the privacy policy. And maybe that's what people saw as people were monitoring this. And as long as I think at one point in time on their Tails investigation, they actually found that at one point in time, all of the ads were being served directly from Etcher's own domain. And they said, well, that's not a really huge concern. It's concerning, but not massively huge. And uh, the problem is, is that something had apparently happened with nobody knowing it on the background except the guys at Tails were looking for this that caused a lot of information to be going out. Basically sharing with Google and a number of other companies that you were downloading Tails, what your IP address was, and what USB stick you were putting it on if you were using Etcher. 
And so that is a serious concern. So I did want to spend a little bit of time looking at their privacy statement here. And it is a typical privacy statement from the company that does not care about your privacy. I mean, think something like Firefox, but worse, you know. I mean, I know I had to get that uh, that jab in there. <clears throat> Take that, Fox. All right. Uh, so uh, protecting your privacy is important to us. That's why we're going to share everything and even augment your data with third-party sources. That's right, because your privacy is important to us. So this policy here is meant to help you understand how we collect, use, and share your personal data. This, yes, it's all there for us. All right, so I'm going to point out just a couple of things, of course. In clo uh, this policy applies to personal information processed by us in our business, including our sites, mobile applications, and other online or offline offerings collectively as a service. So literally anything our fingers are in, this policy applies to. So you have great concern using anything they have, whether online or offline. Privacy policy does not apply to third-party services, uh, even if those are accessible. So Google Analytics does not apply to this policy or any of these other companies that they are doing. So information they collect, obviously any information you provide to them. If you create an account information or communicate with them, respond to surveys or engage on the social media. That's obvious and goes without saying. Uh, under information you provide us automatic data collection, we may con collect information automatically when you use the services. This information could be your IP address, user settings, MAC address, cookie identifiers, mobile carrier, mobile advertising, and other unique identifiers, details about your browser, operating system, or device location information, internet service provider, pages you visit before, during, and after using the service, information about the links you click, and the other information about how you use the service, information we collect may be associated with accounts or other devices, and I have a micro machine to tell you too. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, so in addition, they collect data regarding use of the services, types of content you interact with. So basically, we are going to fingerprint. We're going to track you before and after you land here by our use of, of cookies. We're going to engage in a whole lot of data collection. Now they talk about cookies, pixel tags, web beacons, analytics, and interest-based advertising technologies. Uh, we, as well as their third parties... Um, they will basically use this information in order to uh, push the data that they have. They're using cookies here for this, but they're also using pixels and web beacons. So Facebook pixels, TikTok, TikTok pixels. There you go. TikTok pixels. There you go. Tasty. I'll take an orange, please. All right. Um, TikTok pixels, Google Analytics tag managers. They use Google Analytics here uh, to do information, including visitor behavior, demographics, so they're basically going all in on Google Linux. Anything they can get, they will get out. And then other sources. This is this is the one that when this is in your privacy policy, the privacy policies went way more frightening. We may obtain information about you from other sources, including through third-party services and organizations to supplement the information provided by you. Supplemental information allows us to verify information that you have provided to us and enhance our ability to provide you with information about our business, products, and services. So they can basically go out to a data broker and buy extra information to augment their profile on you. And then how we use it, of course, to fill out the contracts, obviously. If you're asking for something, obviously they need to do that. But then to analyze and improve the information, to do um, uh, legitimate interests, such as detecting security, etc. Obviously, that goes without saying. But provide you with content and services, of course, including all of those amazing ads that we all love to see at all times. Isn't that awesome? Use de-identified and aggregated information, of course. Uh, which, of course, we can re-identify. Look at this. Share contests with friends. or con Our services may offer various tools and functionalities. For example, we may allow you to provide information about your friends through our referral services. Great. If you are my friend and you give my information to them intentionally, you're not my friend anymore. Sorry. We, we have to part ways at that point in time. All right. Process information on behalf of our customers, of course. Uh, and then, of course, how we use the automatic collection. So operational performance functionality and advertising or targeted relating so the whole uh, whole gamut of things and then of course the disclosures since it's all disclosures so there you go opt out we may periodically send you free newsletters and emails that directly promote our services when you receive these communications you have the ability to opt out so you can opt out 
of newsletters, but you can't opt out of the telemetry. And that was one of the things people were saying is even if I did opt out on the website or on the, the settings inside of the Etra program itself, it was still sending out information. Uh, they can. There's the information about modifying emails, do not track. Uh, so we do not respond to or honor do not track signals or similar mechanisms. So do not talk. <laughs> we track you anyway, yo. We track you anyway, yo. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, of course, your privacy rights. Uh, you don't have any rights. Uh, but, of course, they say you can correct re request correct information. You can, uh, let's see, personal information about you consists consistent with legal requirements. In addition, you may have the right in some cases to receive or have your electronic personal information transferred to you by uh, transferred to another party. You can request deletion and request restriction or object to processing your information. You, can, I object, sir. I object. We don't care. Ha ha ha. <laughs> See the statement on our do not track policy. Uh, so, and then there's international data transfers, retention, security, children's information. Of course, they throw everything in there. And then these are the identifiers they're collecting. So I'm just going to read the yes columns here. So basic identifiers, name, alias, postal address, unique personal identifier, online identifier, IP address, email address, account name, social security, or other similar identifiers. Okay, that's wonderful. I hope they're not buying my social security number from something because I've downloaded their crappy application. Okay, they're um, protected classifications under California law. So all of these protected information they're not doing. Commercial information they're not doing. What type of, you know, retail. Uh, they're not doing biometric information yet. <laughs> That's good. Uh, how long before we have to insert our, uh, our, our uh, drop of our blood and scan our fingerprint in order to 2FA into our PayPal accounts because they're crazy. Um, internet or other electronic activity. Yes, they collect this. Browsing history, search history, information on consumers interaction with an internet website application or advertisement. They don't do geolocation. That's surprising actually. Sensory data, professional data. So they don't do the, all of those other ones down there. So effectively, this is a very crazy privacy policy when they can augment the data with, uh, with other information out there. We have a, a very very, a very interesting privacy policy, to say the least. And so for all these reasons, Tails has said, yeah, bro, we don't really want to recommend that anymore. And so uh, what we see in this instance is Tails is removing it and giving the warning. I do wish they would have made this a little bit more clear earlier. Obviously, some people knew that there were issues with Etcher. I had actually never heard of those, and this is a world I tend to live in, so that's very interesting. Fortunately, I don't typically use Etcher a lot, although I can say I have recommended it on based on Linux Mint's recommendation of it. I'm going to have to rescind that one. So uh, we'll look into other options and maybe we'll do a, a, maybe a couple separate videos about uh, how you can get Linux Mint going with uh, a Windows or a Mac or something in the future. I don't know. But anyway, there is our thought. Thanks to uh, Tails for actually doing a lot of research on this and uh, pulling the trigger and uh, letting everybody know. So that's uh, useful information for all of us. With that, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.